Hi, I'm Chloe. I work for Appetite on a freelance basis. I'm duty manager in the Green Towns exhibition today, and I'm also an artist within it as well. So Green Towns is about reimagining our towns for the future, responding to the climate crisis and inviting people to come in and see what the artists have created for the, for the piece. Okay, let, let's have a, a look around. Great. So over here in the window, actually, is John Paul Green's work. So he's used stencils to create this very striking piece in the window, which reads, it's time to make climate change. So we've had a lot of passerbys looking in and seeing it. Also, it glows in the dark. The pebbles, a mixture of, of well, the gravel really, isn't it? A mixture of white and green. And I was going to ask, yeah. those little green pebbles look as though they might glow in the dark. I'm going to have to come back and have a look at that <laughs> after dark. Yeah, it's really beautiful. They're solar powered rocks. And so it does light up at night. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, yeah, and these are also John Paul Green's paintings, so he's got different messages on these as well. So these are the three canvases? Yeah. Blue, orange and green. Tell yeah. me about these. Okay, so I'll just read it. So the first one, the blue one, is The groan of the last glacier will echo through the ages. Orange, it's time to make climate change. And green. One day our forests will breathe a sigh of relief. So yeah, really powerful messages. And I suppose it's about making us think about how we can act, but also how nature will one day perhaps take over. The people that have been in to see the exhibition so far, what's been their response? The response to this uh, work, people have really enjoyed stopping by the window and just reading the message, which is really nice, as they walk past. Okay, what else is on display? Over here are a series of prints by Black Lodge Press, which are a small publishing press based in the north of England. It's run by CJ. These prints are screen prints, and again, it's giving, giving messages that are absolutely gorgeous. The details of, of roots and vegetables, and flowers. Uh, so its messages such as growing a garden is a beautiful and radical act. Another one is over your cities grass will grow. So it's quite, yeah, it's political. It's a statement. It's making the point that actually really simple acts are going to make a difference. We need to get more and more people on board, don't we? Just making very, very simple lifestyle changes. Yes, I think that's true. And also in a radical way, I think that's important. There's a little anarchy symbol on there as well which uh, CJ represents as well, which is nice. I do like a bit of anarchy now and again. <laughs> these photographs, monochrome photographs, eight, eight of them, yes. These have really caught my eye. Who's made these? There's something special about the process. Tell me about these. Okay, so these were made by Melanie King, a working class artist and curator, and she's created these beautiful photographs. Firstly, she's interested in the relationship between the environment, photography and materials, and she's researching a number of sustainable photographic processes to minimise the environmental impact of her art practice. So all these photographs uh, are developed using seaweed and they're printed on paper made from bamboo. And the images are photographs of places in Kent that will be submerged by rising sea levels. Fascinating process to this. Being a photographer long term, as I have been, the amount of chemicals I must have used over the years, the amount of 35 millimeter film in little plastic canisters and things. I like that this photographer's using a, a process that's much kinder to the environment. And the images are really striking. Printed using seaweed in the process, in the processing of the film. I would have expected the images to be green. but <laughs> <laughs> And the bamboo paper. That looks really gorgeous paper. It's got, I don't know, it's a, a sort of sheen to it. Not like the, uh, the photo prints you'd get back from the chemist. They're really beautiful, aren't they? It's quite an ominous feeling looking at them, thinking that one day they'll be underwater, which is, yeah, it leaves you with quite a... An impact, doesn't it? It's good that Newcastle under Lyme is landlocked. I think we're far <laughs> enough away from the sea. <laughs> uh, so here we've got a library of books and things to read, all on a particular theme. Yeah, we've got a selection of books which we're inviting people to come 
and sit down on a beanbag, have a little read. So a lot about green action, the wilding, Britain's habitats, how we can create sustainable food resources. We've got the Extinction Rebellion handbook. So a whole range of things. And part of this is to remind people to come and learn something, but also take a moment to relax and not feel burdened by this individually, because it is about the collective response, not the individual. You've had a lot of time because you're managing this exhibition. You've had a lot of time here at Newcastle Common. What have you learned by flicking through and having a look at what's on display here? So what I've learned is how people respond to, to things within an exhibition. And adding the beanbags was a really nice uh, way to invite people in uh, to relax and come off the high street and come and engage. A lot of these books I do have at home already, so it's really nice to see them. But there's a few which I, I really want to have a little look at and get my teeth into them. I love the wilding book and the idea of rewilding Newcastle under Lyme. There's so many species that we've probably already lost that we could reintroduce, maybe. There's other species that we're about to lose even within our lifetimes. So rewilding, it's at the top of my agenda, or certainly near the top. That's great. And I think it's lovely because people will come in individually and be drawn to a specific book. Uh, And there's lots of different approaches. One book on fresh food from tiny spaces. So if you have a balcony or a terrace garden or no garden, that you can still grow a little bit of fruit and veg. I recently got an allotment, um, a plot on the allotment, uh, and I'm just so inspired and excited to try and grow my, try and grow my own vegetables and hopefully share that with my community as well. It's just a nice place, isn't it, to get out at the end of the working day or something, just to, to go and not put your feet up, but... Dig a bit of soil, plant a few things in the ground, watch the clouds go by. You're so right. And there's uh, the community feeling of that as well. Just borrowing somebody's wheelbarrow. It really brings our road together. So I live on Campbell Road in Stoke. And it's my favourite road that I've ever lived on in Stoke. Just because there's that feeling of a slight community. Just because you know people from the allotment. But it's also about making that accessible for everybody. So we're trying to work on that and perhaps have an open day or... Yeah. Excellent. So I look forward to seeing pictures on your allotment. So in one of the glass cabinets here, just next to the little library, next to the, the office door, this, there's a farm made out of um, <laughs> cardboard and the like. So tell me about this. Who's behind this? So Dan Thompson has been creating these towns out of cardboard. So he's using this as a prototype uh, to perhaps invite people in the future to make some as well. He's worked with people in towns and cities across the UK. Uh, So he has held workshops to build the city they want to create from scrap cardboard. So he has already done the workshops. And the well-insulated homes to rent, uh, city farms in old factories, repair shops, where the department stores used to be. Uh, And there's a question, what does the Newcastle underline of the future need? And he's asking people to respond with their suggestions by tweeting, at artists makers so yeah it's about imagining our towns and creating them out of cardboard for the future dan's done a lot of work hasn't he around the regeneration of uh, emptying town centers and city centers so i still haven't caught up with dan so dan if you're listening you're, you're on my list <laughs> i want to have this conversation with you and what else have we got chloe okay. uh, so these were the four key initiatives which brought about this project so I'll just read those to you. So it's number one, make space for solutions. So our ideas need space. Town centres provide a range of spaces for a diversity of projects. Shops that need repair, food waste cafes, charity shops, antique markets and stores. The markets in Newcastle and Lyme are doing really well, aren't they? It's yeah. great to see a whole range of different markets, antique markets, artisan, craft makers, local food, all that sort of thing really does seem to be bringing people into the town centre again. It really does. We have such a, a big footfall for the markets. It's so lovely because Newcastle and Lyme is a market town. And it used to be nationwide famous for its markets. So it's lovely uh, to see that happening. We had the vegan market starting last year, and that was the biggest footfall 
I think, in a long time. So that's, yeah, it's reimagining those ways of coming into town and ways of spending money as well and finding food and, and other things. It's good to be doing retail out in the fresh air too, isn't it? I love going to the, the artisan market and get my uh, Portuguese custard tarts from the Windmill Cafe around the corner, which are really lovely, really recommend. <laughs> So the second poster we've got up on the wall here, right at the end of the exhibition, is Plant Trees to Fix Problems. Now, I, I find actually Newcastle and Lyme, North Staffordshire area, is quite green. There's lots of trees around, actually. Yeah. Do we need more? Are there enough right here in the town centre? I think the answer would be no. <laughs> From my perspective, or trees that have more space to grow. You do look at the trees and they look really sad because they're enclosed in concrete. <laughs> which they will one day burst through with their mighty roots. But it is, it is quite sad um, to see. The third poster actually says reuse buildings and actually Appetite are doing exactly that, aren't they, with Newcastle Common? Yeah, so Newcastle Common is about, again, reimagining our high street spaces by filling it with different things that the community want, exhibitions, um, all sorts. And what about poster number four? Attract green tourists. Little green people, is that what we want? <laughs> so tourists are obviously very important to an area and perhaps we do lack that in our beautiful city. And it's about designing environmental projects to attract tourists. It says tourists are worried about the environmental impact of travel and want to stay close to home. So we're looking for hotels and visitor attractions that conserve water, use sustainable materials and reduce their waste. Um, I got back to North Staffordshire last year, last spring, after over 30 years living elsewhere. And I'm feeling like I'm still a tourist, actually, now, back in North Staffs. I'm loving getting out there and revisiting some of the places I went to as a kid. Um, places that I never really visited as a kid that I'm absolutely loving now, like a walk around Westport Lake, great man-made lake in, in the city. It's the largest area of water, I think, in the North Staffordshire region. Brilliant. It's lovely just to get out there and be that green tourist right on your own doorstep. Yeah, it's really beautiful. And I think after, during the pandemic, people couldn't go away. So we have turned to our green spaces and appreciated them, enjoyed them. We have seen a higher increase of people going to these places. And I think it's about creating more activities, as it says, well-designed environmental projects, which people can take part in, which are affordable as well. I think that's really important and accessible for everybody. It's a big part of what Appetite do. Uh, they make the arts accessible for everybody. And that's what we're doing here, which is lovely. Couple of pieces to finish with. We've got, is this a charcoal drawing on the wall at the end of the gallery? Yeah, so this is by Ian Mood. It's a charcoal on paper study of the Stop the Stink Prota in Silverdale last year. And yeah, activism is an important part of bringing about change. We should be able to speak out peacefully about the things we are passionate about. One environmental campaign, surely, that everyone locally will know about. And we've got the door closed, haven't we, yeah. as we are talking here at Newcastle Common, because today is one of those days when the wind is blowing in the wrong direction and bringing the smell of Wally's quarry into the town centre. So I think, is this the final piece we're looking at? Chloe, what have we got here? Um, the, I do actually recognise the paper that these yeah. prints are made on. Tell us about these. This is Dominic Marshall. Um, 25 years after leaving art school, Dominic cleared the kitchen table during lockdown and started a mini screen printing studio. And these prints are the result. Do you recognise the papers he's used, it asks. So it is on McDonald bags and also Amazon parcels. The imagery is very striking and it, it's about, again, using these materials, but also standing up for that that horrible culture that exists and, and making art over it. <laughs> throwaway culture that we're all, we're all part of or have been part of. And Dominic's made these papier-mâché um, bowls as well. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're so delicate with similar colours and exploring that, that theme again of, of reusing 
and re exploring for the future as well. I think that's what I get from it. Overall, Chloe, what, what are you taking away from your involvement with this exhibition, the Green Town exhibition? Myself and uh, Francesca Wheeler have been very busy completing our part of um, the project, which has been the Green Diagnosis Van. So this Saturday, we're going to have our van parked out the front of the shop and we're inviting people to come and receive their green prescription. And part of that is to go on the Wood Wide Web route map. So we've created a map which focuses on four different aspects of approaching this crisis. So it's creativity, relaxation, action and nature. So those four different routes will take you to four different trees, which we've selected in the town centre, and they'll have messages on them. And we're inviting people to come back to the space, take part in a workshop, receive their green prescription and, and reflect on what the trees have to say. <laughs> You've run this project already earlier this week. How honest do you think people are being when you're actually putting that prescription together? What are the questions you're asking them? How honest do you think the answers are? Perhaps not that honest. <laughs> I think it's really hard and it's quite a, a sensitive individual thing. That's why we included the relaxation element. Again, going back to the fact it's not down to the individual. It's very important to do things as an individual, but I do believe it's the collective strive and, and putting pressure on the right people to do things. So that's the action element. So we've got some speakers coming on Saturday from the Green Party to just talk to people about what they're doing as well. It's about forming connections. We've got a notice board as well to connect people together. Certainly the time to make these lifestyle changes is now. So I hope the exhibition does actually inspire people to do some quite simple little changes to their lifestyle so, um, so that people living close to the town centre can begin to make a difference to climate change and its environmental impacts. Really great chatting with you. Thanks for showing me around the exhibition. And as we finish, I can hear a bird singing in the city centre, which is quite lovely.